Welcome back, Covalence friends. Today we're gonna to be going over the absolute most basic JavaScript animation we could ever come up with. It's one that would could easily be done using CSS and probably better off being done using CSS, but the principles and fundamentals of what we're doing can obviously be expanded upon and taken as far as you need. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. All right, let's go ahead and create our index.html. We're going to create our styles.css and we're gonna create a JS file as well. So index.js. Uh, let's just get all the file creation out of the way up front. Let's use a little code snippet here to stub out the document and we'll call it JS animations. Let's add our CSS link in there and let's see it's styles, right? Yep, styles with an S. And we are going to just put a single div in the page. We're gonna give it the ID block and then we're going to add our uh, JavaScript as well. So index.js. And let's go ahead and jump into our styles.css. Let's, let's remove the margin and the padding that the browser will probably put on there by default. We're using Chrome. Does that for some reason, I don't know why, but we're gonna just remove it and then we're gonna target our block element. And we're going to say that we're gonna give it a width, two Ms, a height. We're gonna give it a background color. See, dodge blue, gotta love dodge blue. And we are going to do position absolute. And we'll say top, uh, let's do 10 Ms, left zero. And if you guys wanna use pixels, you can use pixels. I'm just using Ms because it's a habit of mine. I prefer Ms, I just like uh, basing all the sizes off of uh, font size. And so I always go with Ms. And we are now going to go ahead and run this real quick just to make sure that our block is in the page so we can see it, it's right there. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. We got our ID block and we have all the styles so everything looks good. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of animate this thing to kind of go across to about the middle of the page and then it's going to skip back to the beginning. So ideally, we're gonna see it kind of just loop around where it goes to the middle, back to the beginning. We're only using JavaScript here, right? So we could do this using an animation, but this is all about JavaScript animations. So the basics of JavaScript animations at least. So let's go ahead, jump into our JavaScript file. So we're gonna create an immediately executed function so that we don't contaminate our window. And we're gonna grab our block and let's just use document.getElementById since we have an ID. And we'll say if not block, let's go ahead and just log something to the console. Uh, no block found, sad face. Um, and we'll just return. But if there is a block, uh, now typically what a lot of people think they can do um, let's just say we wanted to do one iteration of the animation, right? Where we basically just went to the middle and stopped. A lot of people think that we could just do a for loop, right? So uh, we say for let i equal zero, i is less than or equal to 50, and plus plus i. Uh, yes, I know that we're, we're basically wasting an iteration since we're already starting at zero, but don't worry about it. Uh, let's say block.style.left equals, we'll say i uh, percent, right? And so it's gonna loop through and you would think, okay, every time it changes, we'll see the block kind of move across the screen, right? Well, let's go ahead and just kind of refresh this thing real quick. So we can see that, you know, when we refresh this, it immediately pops up, we remove the browser and we open it back up. It basically opens up with it in the middle, right? And you might be thinking, oh, maybe it's just really, really fast, right? Well, let's go ahead and put that to the test. So let's just say, um, I divided by, uh, let's say a thousand, right? Not 10,000, let's say. So that'd be 50,000, right? So now we're going through 50,000 loops here and we're gonna refresh this screen. And we can see that it just still does nothing. Let's just put a little console.log in there. We'll just log I just to make sure that it's actually running all of these loops. And we'll see that it is running through, it's actually taking some time, and then you can see it's kind of stuck in the big, uh, stuck in the left here, and then it pops over to the right, just instantaneously. We never see it move, or gradually move. It just goes from one, like one space, it teleports, literally teleports. So, refresh again. We can see it goes through all 50,000 iterations. Once it's done, it just kind of jumps to the center of the screen. Not the best JavaScript animation, right? We're not accomplishing any of what we want to here. 
So let's go ahead, pull the code back up and we're gonna remove this. Um, and essentially, like if we wanted to kind of animate this forever, we do something like a while one loop, right? Which is the same thing as doing like while true, you know, you could put true in here and basically just always loops, right? And then this would kind of accomplish in, in, in theory what we're trying to do, right? It basically goes to the middle and then once it's done with this for loop, it jumps back to the beginning of the while loop where i is equal to zero again, and then it starts at zero once again and jumps back to the beginning. But unfortunately, JavaScript is single threaded, right? And so what's happening is, is that when we, when we actually fret refresh this page, it's going through all of those loops and it's never repainting the screen, right? So we actually need to give JavaScript control of the UI thread to allow it to repaint the screen and not just have it stuck in this loop the entire time, right? So I don't want to refresh this page right now because with this while one loop, um, it's going to freeze up the browser. It could end up crashing Chrome. I will lose, I'll probably get locked out. I may not even be able to close the browser, right? Uh, it's kind of a pain. You might have to control alt delete <laughs> to like actually force close but it will be in this forever and it will never repaint the screen, right? So there are cases while while true loops do work, but we actually have to uh, pause and break out of the loop temporarily uh, to allow the, the screen to repaint. But instead of using a while one or a while true loop, um, we're actually going to use a little bit of recursion to accomplish this. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to create a function called animate so we can actually do this down here since functions are hoisted so we'll say function animate and we're going to go ahead and we're going to say if i is greater than or equal to 50 we'll say just greater than if i is greater than 50 then i equals zero all right so basically we're going to go all the way up through i and then once i is greater than 50 we're going to jump i back to zero right and so at this point in time we could technically if we wanted to if we just put this line in here right this is basically doing the exact same thing as this right so we could say you know do this and then animate plus plus i right and then that would essentially replace this right and that would basically be the exact same code, right? And again, we'd have the exact same issue where it would just freeze up the browser. It would be going forever. And we'd actually have a pretty big heap issue where we'd probably run out of heap space. It's, 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 it's a disaster. And in every way, this is a disaster. So what we need to do is we actually need to allow it to break out, all right, and then pop back in. So you could use something like a promise to do this. Um, we're gonna use a native function with a callback called request animation frame. So this is actually on the window and it takes in a function as an argument, which is basically the callback function. And once an animation frame is given to you, we're able to op, we're actually able to run this code that we have in here, right? And then, so what's gonna happen is when we're given an animation frame, we're going to set, oh, we wanna just set it to I. We're gonna set this to I, we're gonna set left to I, and then we're going to pop back into animate, these exact same, so we're using recursion, and we're going to run the exact same code again, right? But it's going to request the animation frame and it's only going to fire once the animation frame is given, right? So this, in theory, should work. Let's go ahead and run it. And we get I is not defined. Well, let's see, what do we got here? Oh, that's the problem we actually need to pass in a value that would help. So again, easy debugging. When we call animate, we pass in a one, we pass in zero, we're gonna waste an iteration, right? Since we're starting at zero. So we can animate with one. Now let's go ahead and run it. And we can see that we do get the animation that we're requesting. All right, we would be able to scroll right now if we had content that was scrollable but it's constantly moving, right? Now, this might be too fast, right? So you might be thinking, well, what do we do now? The animation frame function is very cool because it basically, uh, it gives you an animation frame when it's readily available. So we actually don't know when that is. So if you're doing something time specific, JavaScript is not a great language if you're doing something very like timing uh, dependent, right? Where you're like very dependent on time itself. And if you were doing something like a countdown clock or something along those lines, you'd always want to be checking with the system clock itself. So we'll do a future video on that. We might be doing a future video on actually creating an animated clock, which sounds very cool. Put it on the list. 
Um, but if we wanted to slow down this animation, right, this will go forever. If we wanted to slow this down, uh, the way that we would have to do it is there's multiple ways. One is that we can actually wrap this in a set timeout. So we would pass in a function. We would pass in the time. Let's just delay it by 100 milliseconds. And then technically, we actually could just put this in the set timeout function, or we could pass in the entire request animation frame in here, right? So if we needed to be a little bit more specific to the time itself, then we would want to just not worry about this. But if we wanted it to be smoother, and I'm all about smooth, the best JavaScript animations are always done using this request animation frame function. So go ahead and make sure that you use this. And uh, now we'll go ahead and just refresh this. And we kind of see that I get this little jumpy. So every 100 milliseconds is now requesting an animation frame. And then we're actually moving the thing a little bit, right? So 1%. Now, this might be the desired effect. Maybe you want it to be blocky, right? And that's fine if you do want it to be like that. Otherwise, if you wanted to actually smooth it out, you really can't do this, right? So we'd have to figure out a different way to do this. So let's like remove the set timeout. And instead, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to do something like, uh, you know, I divided by 10, let's just say. Now, we can say if I divided by 10 is greater than 50, we are now going to, um, you know, do the exact same thing. So we're gonna set it back to zero. So now we're actually going all the way to 500, right? So at this point in time, we're going to do we're increasing the loops by a factor of 10. So as you can see, when we refresh this, the animation is significantly smoother, but it's way slowed down. So it's much further slowed down. Now we could we could play with this number, we could change it if we wanted to do just five, we could do five, right? So I divided by five, refresh a little bit faster, but still smooth, right? Now we could slow it down even more if we if we increase the number, but I think you guys get the point. And more or less, you know, again, there are cases where this would be accomplished much better using a CSS animation, right, this particular animation. But there are a lot of cases where JavaScript animation is a necessity, right? There's things you can do with JavaScript that you really just cannot accomplish with CSS. And it's especially true when you get into kind of things like canvas animations. And so if you're constantly redrawing a canvas, right, you're basically just going to be requesting this animation frame, redrawing the canvas over and over and over again. And you're looking for potentially input. If you're creating a game, you're looking for keyboard input. And then you're animating the canvas or the divs or the blocks on the element, you know, in the actual DOM. You'll be animating, animating those in accordance with a as a response to the keyboard input. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, otherwise, you know, we will catch you next time. All right, so again, I really hope that you're able to learn at least one thing today and that you could take what we did, as simple as it was, and expand upon it and just make more and more complex, bigger and better JavaScript animations. Uh, you could even kind of take what we did and expand into game development using you know, Canvas and, or just using the actual DOM elements themselves. If um, you know, I want to give a shout out to one of our alumni, Evan Norton. If you haven't checked out Retro MMO yet, it's a pretty incredible web-based game. It's retro-mmo.com. Go look at that and you can definitely see what the possibilities can be as far as uh, online and web-based game development. But if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, make sure that you hit the subscribe button below. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to post them. And if you have any ideas for future videos, don't hesitate to uh, you know, give, out, give a shout out and we'll make sure that we can uh, you know, make the content. All right, until next time.